Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel That Model Railway Guy and welcome to another kit building tutorial. Today we're going big and I'm building my very first G scale kit for the railway I have out in the garden. Now this actually comes from a company called PDF Models, there's a link down in the description if you want to check them out, and they have some very reasonably priced kits for garden railways, which is certainly refreshing considering that locos and rolling stock for the larger scales tend to be a bit more expensive. Now, I saw they do a slate wagon kit and I thought it looked like good fun, so today I'm going to have a go at putting it together and I'm going to bring you guys along for the ride, so let's jump in. So here we are at the workbench and this is the kit to make up the entire wagon. It might look a bit daunting when it's all in pieces like this, but actually as we start to get some of the parts out it becomes fairly obvious how it all fits together. As you can see, I'm going to start off by assembling the main body of the wagon, which is made from laser cut wood. Here I've got the floor of the wagon, which has some nice planks engraved into it, and I'll take one of the side pieces and push them together. And because it's all laser cut, the parts slot together really nicely, so you shouldn't need to do any trimming or filing. I'm going to use standard PVA glue to stick these together and all I'm doing is running a small bead along the side of the floor and also a bit along the underside too just for a bit of extra security. And then I can take the side piece again and just push it into place as before. Next I'll fit one of the end pieces in place and this is a similar process. I'm also going to add some glue to the notches for the corners too, and this will make the body even stronger. And when you put the end piece on, obviously you want to make sure that the notches lock together to make the corner nice and secure. So with the first two sides in place, now I'm just going to repeat the process for the other two sides to build up the full body. The final side piece may be a little tricky to manoeuvre into position as this time you need to make sure it interlocks with both of the end pieces. As it's a fairly large scale though, at least you can see what you're doing and with a little bit of work you should be able to get it into place. With that the body is now mostly assembled and next I'm going to be giving it a coat of paint but first let's leave it a while so all the glue can dry. So the body is together and the glue has now dried and before I start painting there is one little thing left to add. We have these small wooden squares here which may initially just look like offcuts but actually these help form the buffer blocks. With a bit of glue these just stick onto the existing buffers that are part of the side piece. This just gives them a bit of extra depth and makes them look more like the dumb buffers that were often seen on narrow gauge and industrial rolling stock. So with one down just another three to go. And with those on, now we can get to the painting. For this I'm just going to give the entire wagon body a very simple coat of grey, and you can see the paint takes to the laser cut wood really well. Now some people like to use primer on their models before painting, and that is absolutely fine if you want to do that. In this case though I actually want the wood to show through a little bit. I'm not going for a perfect finish here, I want this wagon to look a little worn and unique, so rather than giving it a really nice solid coat, I'm being a bit rough, and while I'm still covering the entire wagon, it doesn't matter to me if the paint is a bit thinner in some places. One area I did have to pay a bit of extra attention to though was the tops and bottoms of the rails that would hold the slate in place. I found it looks a bit odd if you leave these unpainted and while it added a bit of extra time to the process I do think it was worth it.
With the body covered in a nice coat of grey paint, it's once again time to leave this to dry before we move on to the next step. So just while we're waiting, now is a great time to quickly mention channel memberships. And if you're not aware of what this is, well, basically it's where you can help support the channel and you get some awesome extra benefits in return. For example, some of the perks are early access to videos, behind the scenes content, unique emojis to use in the comments, and the ability to get a guaranteed response from me to any questions that you might have about the videos. I even film special running sessions on the layout for members too, where I open it up to them and run whatever they want to see, sometimes against my own better judgement. <laughs> anyway, there's a few different tiers to choose from, so if you want to check those out, click the join button below this video or the link in the description. And now, back to the video. So as I used acrylic paint on the body, it really hasn't taken much time to dry at all, so now we can start to add some of the detailing. We're starting off again with the buffers and these little rims that fit around the end of each block. A little bit of super glue on the buffer seemed to work quite well and then I could slot the rim on. By the time I'd added the rims to all of the buffers, the glue had set and I was able to move on. There's also a coupling hook for each end, and using the super glue again to hold it in place, these just fit onto the end of the wagon using the slot provided. The detailing may be done, but our wagon won't be going anywhere without wheels, so let's tackle this now. I think the wheels are 3D printed parts again, at any rate they're plastic, and you may find that you need to trim some flash off just to make sure they're nice and smooth. Then they can simply be pushed onto the axle. I'm not worrying about getting the gauge right at the moment, I just need the wheels on there initially. And once I've completed the wagon, I can put it on a piece of track and adjust the wheels to get them perfect. With the wheels on the axles, it's time to fit the axle boxes to one side of the body. There are little notches on the laser cut side which act as a guide for where the axle boxes should go and this is a really nice feature as it means you don't have to worry about getting the alignment perfect. It really is a nice easy kit to build and it's because of things being well thought out like this rather than leaving you guessing. With a bit of super glue on the back you can see they fit perfectly between the little notches. What I'm now going to do is feed the axle into the axle boxes I've already attached to the body. Then I'll glue the second axle box to the other side of the body, making sure that the axle fits into this too. And again, I'm using those guide notches on the side to position it. And with that done for one set of wheels, I can then just repeat this process for the other axle. And there we go, the wheels are now on, and as you can see, they're nice and free running. The final bit of detailing is to add the brackets for the corners of the wagon. These are just very thin 3D printed pieces, which simply glue into the spaces where the two laser cut sides meet at the corner. Again, I'm using super glue so I can work quickly, as there are plenty of these to put on with four needed for each corner. It's not difficult, but it does take a little bit of time, especially as you want to make sure you get each piece nice and straight.
The wagon is almost complete, but before I get it out on the layout, I am just going to do a little bit more painting. At the moment, the body is mostly grey, but looking at pictures, it does seem that the supports between these slats should be painted black, so I'm just going to do that now. I suppose if you wanted to, you could also take this opportunity to paint some of the 3D printed parts black too, like the brackets and the axle boxes. Personally though, I think the black plastic looks absolutely fine, so I'm not going to worry about that today. And so there we go. With that final bit of painting, this wagon is complete. It looks great, but let's see how well it runs out in the garden. So here we are outside in the garden. It's another sunny day at the Pevensey Light Railway. And as you can see, here comes the train now. I've actually made up several of these wagon kits to create a nice little train. And I think they look really great running together like this. In fact, they're so reasonably priced that I'm actually thinking about getting a few more kits in the future to create an even longer train. I mean, seeing as I'm out in the garden, I'm not exactly short on space. Now, you may be wondering how the wagons are coupled together. I'm actually just using a bit of chain I got from b and It's the type you might use for a bath plug, and this quite happily clips into the couplings on either end of the wagon. I just cut very short sections, usually about two or three links long, and this keeps the wagons fairly close together, but also allows me enough space to get my fingers in for coupling and uncoupling. As you can see though, all of the wagons are running really nicely, they're having no trouble going over any of the points, and being so small they have no issues making it around the tight curves either. The only thing I would say is that they are a bit light, but that's kind of to be expected considering they're mostly made from thin wood. As you may have noticed, I've added some stones to help weigh them down a bit more, and this has stopped them from jumping off the more uneven sections of track. I'll probably add a proper load to these in the future to give them a bit of a purpose, and that'll help weigh them down too, or if I want them empty, I could just attach some weight to the underside instead. That said though, I'm really impressed with this kit. They look great, they're priced really well, and they're really easy to put together. The wagon I built on camera probably took me no longer than half an hour to make if you take out the drying time, so it's a fun little project that can be completed in an evening, and I think these would really fit in well on any garden railway. Like I said at the beginning, there is a link to the PDF models website down in the description and I'm definitely looking forward to trying out a few more of their kits in the future. In fact, they actually have lots of loco kits on their website too, which look really great, so maybe I'll have a go at one of those in the future. Let me know down in the comments if that's something you'd like to see, but for now that's going to be it, so if you haven't already, please do subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications for future videos too. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!